Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In today's video, I've got something kind of unusual for you. On my Bix 2, which is just a test platform, don't worry about the airframe, this will work on any airframe, I put a Maytech Vario Express LRS receiver in that plane. And what I did is in my radio, I have some logic set up so that if the plane goes below a predetermined altitude, then the radio automatically activates auto level mode on my Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4. It applies some throttle and up elevator so that after going level, it can gradually climb back up to another predetermined altitude, which in my case is 150 feet. So my downward altitude trigger is 140. If the plane hits 140 feet, then my rescue mechanism kicks in, the plane auto levels and climbs back up to 150 and then turns off the rescue mechanism and returns the gyro back to whatever state it was in at the time the rescue was invoked. I will put my Edge TX configuration on Discord in the Edge TX channel if you want to download it, but I have to give you a word of caution. This is not one of those configurations that you can just put on any plane and have it work. You're going to have to tune it. And the reason I say that is because different planes have different characteristics. Some planes you might need a little bit more aggressive gain on your auto level. Some you might need to trigger your altitude trigger a little earlier, depending on how fast it moves and the types of maneuvers you're using. So it's not one of these configurations you can just simply dump on your radio and expect it to work. You have to spend a little bit of time tuning this one. One other point I have to make is that there is a switch that activates this rescue net or what I call a hard deck. So if I turn the switch on while I'm up flying, the hard deck safety is enabled and the plane will recover itself. If the switch is off, the hard deck feature is disabled and I can land the airplane. With that said, I'm gonna put it up in the air and we'll give you a little demonstration on how this crash-proof Bixler flies. But first, for you electronics gurus and tinkerers out there, check out PCBWay.com. PCBWay has a full suite of services available to make your ideas a reality, including PCB manufacturing and assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, and injection molding. When you're ready to order, PCBWay provides instant quotes, real-time production tracking, and you can order as few as five boards at a time, which is great for early stage projects. If you need an experienced partner to help bring your ideas to life, check out PCBWay.com. I have a link in the description if you'd like to give them a look. In order to get the auto rescue to work, there are a couple of pieces of hardware you need, and I'll have links in the description for the equipment that I use. But first off, you need a receiver that's got a variometer in it. In my case, I used a Maytech Vario receiver based on Express LRS. The next thing you need is a gyro that has an auto level mode. I use the Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4, but the Super 2s do it as well. So do reflex gyros from FMS. Basically any gyro that will do auto level mode that you can command with a switch should do the job. So once you get your gyro and your receiver installed in the plane, the next thing you'll need to do is go to your telemetry page on the radio. The telemetry is very important because that's what we're actually taking action on. So take a look at my telemetry screen and you can see down here, number 15, I have the altimeter. That's the sensor I'm using. So when I see that altimeter hit a certain number, I trigger things on the radio to happen. So in order for any of this to work, you have to have telemetry with altimeter. Obviously the Maytech board with Express LRS that I use supports the altimeter sensor. Next up, we're gonna take a look at logical switches. And I started mine down here on L15. And there's just a couple of logical switches that are actually pretty simple to understand. The first one is A is less than X and we're looking at the sensor altimeter and I'm using a value of 140 feet and there's an AND switch that says SE up. Remember that hard deck enable? In order for this to work, that SE switch has to be in the up position. If it's not in the up position, none of this functionality works. And the reason we do that is because we wanna be able to take off and land without having the gyro take over and the motor kick in and all of that stuff. You want that SE switch so you can bring the plane down to land it. So SE switch is used in my case to do that. You can use any switch you want. Then when the SE switch is turned off, it says hard deck disabled. Okay, so that's the first logic switch. I'll go in the edit page so you can see what it looks like in the editor. A is less than X. Altimeter is the sensor. 140 feet is the V2 value. And the AND switch is SE up. The next logical switch I used is 16. And this is where the function turns itself off. And in this case, I say A is greater than X when the altimeter exceeds 150 feet and the SE switch is active, then activate logical switch 16. 
Now the thing that causes this all to trigger is a sticky switch. So I have a sticky switch number 17, L17, that says L15 and L16. We'll take a look at the edit page so you can see it. L15 turns the sticky on, L16 turns the sticky off, and in order for this sticky to be functional, SE has to be in the up position. That's how I can turn this feature off at any time just by hitting the SE switch. All right, that's all you need to do on the logical switch front. In my case, I thought 140 feet was pretty good for the hard deck. You might wanna go a little bit lower than that, or you might wanna go a little bit higher than that depending on the plane, the size of the plane, how fast it moves. Those are those tuning things I talked about in the opener. The idea behind putting 150 foot in as a value is to give the plane an opportunity to climb up to a safe value. You might decide you want yours to be 160 feet. The main thing I'm trying to accomplish with this is to prevent porpoising. We don't want the plane to porpoise and turn the function on and off, on and off rapidly, which would cause a porpoising effect. So the idea behind 150 feet is let it climb up about 10 feet before it gives control back. Next up are the special functions. Special function 17, there's no correlation to the logical switch, it's just the first one I had available. I use an override for channel six at negative 100. In my case, channel six is my mode switch. That's what commands the gyro to go in auto level mode. I'll bring up the edit page so you can see what it looks like. When L17 is active, I override my mode channel number six with a value of negative 100. That forces my gyro to go into auto level mode and then the enable switch is turned on. The next special function is a fail safe. It turns out I put a remote master gain on S2 and from time to time during flying, I'll adjust that. But during rescue, if you have your gain turned way down, the rescue impact will also be reduced. It'll have a low gain. So for SF-18, it activates with L-17, which is when that altitude drops below 140 feet. I override channel seven, which is my remote master gain with the value of 70. That way I'm assured every single time when my auto rescue turns itself on, the gyro has sufficient gain to be able to control the craft. The next special function I have is I play a sound called warning two and it plays every one second. So when I've gone below my altitude of 140 feet, this warning sound will play anytime L17 is on until L17 goes off. So it just lets me know, hey, you're in rescue mode right now. All right, that wraps up the special functions. Next up is the mixer. The first thing I do in the mixer is during launch, I like to use the auto level mode of the gyro with a little up elevator. That's what this line does. When I put my SD switch in the up position, I get a little bit of extra up elevator, just 10%, that's all you need. You could do a little less, a little more. That's a tuning question for your taste. But in my case, when SD is up, that gives me a little bit of reflex on the elevator. The next item on the elevator mixer is the rescue itself. So I'll take a look at that one. And here's what happens on the elevator. When L17 goes active, I use an offset of negative six. And all this does, wherever my elevator is at the time, say in this case, it's negative 20, all it does is add about 6% of up elevator. That's all it does. You still have control of the elevator during the rescue mode. Now, if you're a student, you might just say, hey, let go of the elevator and let the plane fly itself. But if you wanna manage the elevator, you still can. There are other options if you wanna pursue them. This worked for me. The next thing we need to take a look at on the mixer is what happens to throttle when the auto rescue is activated. What I did is I put a label in called rescue, I use the source of max, and I set the weight at 30%. What this line means is that when L17 goes active, which means auto rescue goes live, the source for the throttle is switched to max and the weight is set to 30%. So it doesn't matter where my stick is, the radio is gonna set my throttle to 30%. I found on the Bixler that 30% gave me a nice gentle climb rate with about 10 to 15 degrees of up pitch. This is another one of those areas where you have to do a little tuning to find what works for your motor, your prop, and your setup, okay? There's one other little nuance in this one that I used. If you click on the gear icon, notice I used a 0.5 second delay up and no delay down. The idea behind that is I wanna give the gyro about a half a second to get the plane level and add that up pitch before throttle is added. I don't wanna hit the throttle while the plane is aiming down and the gyro begins the recovery. So what I wanna do instead is let the gyro recover the plane first and we delay for only a half a second. After half a second, then the throttle is set to 30% and the plane begins a very nice climb out. So that's what I do on the elevator mix. So a little bit of a throttle delay. 
The last bit I'm gonna show you is a little bit of a pro tip in case you're using Express LRS. In my case, when I initially tested this out, I realized that sometimes it took the telemetry update just a little too long to get there, and the plane got a little bit lower than I would like. It wasn't quite as consistent. So I figured out the easy thing to do would be to increase the telemetry rate on Express LRS. We can do that by backing out of the model setup, pressing the system button, and then the Express LRS button. And I'll point out what I did with my telemetry ratio. I set it to one, to eight, so every eight packets, I get a telemetry update. And when I did that, I saw a much more reactive recovery mode initiated by the radio. The telemetry updates came in just a little bit faster, and that allowed the radio to pick up the loss of altitude quicker and activate the rescue mode immediately. So this function on Express LRS worked really well in my favor. Normally, this is set to one over 32. So I just increased the number of telemetry updates that I'm getting in my regular data flow between the radio and the receiver. And that's it for the radio configuration. Overall, I'd say it's a fairly simple technique to implement. It doesn't take a lot of time. It's just a couple logical switches, a little bit of mix work, and you get an airplane that'll have a hard deck based on an altitude that you want to set for yourself. Let's get back to the field and fly this thing. I've got a switch, SE, and when I turn the SE switch toward me, hard deck disabled. that's a hard deck disabled. So that means I can fly the plane and launch okay. If I push SE away, now the hard deck is enabled and it's gonna try and level itself and, and do everything in the logic. Okay, so hard deck disabled to hard launch. Disabled. I've got my gyro in auto level mode with a little bit of reflex for the launch. Now I'm just gonna throw it and fly it and then we'll get it up in the air and try the recovery. All right, so altitude right now is 159. Okay, so altitude is 159. I'm gonna turn my hard deck on hard deck and I'm gonna de descend below my limit of 100 and... 140 feet. So here we go with the descent. There it goes, it recovered on its own. Now I'm gonna turn because I don't wanna go over the flight line, but it's turn, it's climbing and pitched up on its own. Now it gave me control back. Now I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna descend in a turn. There it is, there's a recovery. It's all automatic. Sweet. Now it's climbing back up and it's giving me control back. Yeah, man, that works great. Look at that. This time I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little more aggressive on the down on the down angle and we'll see what happens. I just want to be a little more aggressive. So there's a descending turn. Oh no, that's bad. The plane recovers, it's in mode. I'm turning it, but it's climbing and it's on auto level. It's working perfectly. That is awesome. That's an awesome configuration, man. John's crash, John's crash proof trainer. There it is, <laughs> recovered itself. How about that? That flies great. Jeez. Now you do have to turn it, you know, you don't want it getting behind you or out of sight, but I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do one more kind of rough pitch maneuver. So I'm just gonna go up and we'll, we'll bring it nose down. Oh no, that's bad, I'm gonna turn. There it is, recovery all by itself. Look at that, man, it works. That's cool, very cool. I will post this configuration in my Discord under Edge TX. Please do not come in the comments and ask me to post it anywhere else. If you want it, you have to get on my Discord in the Edge TX channel and get it. I'm going to turn my hard deck enable off and I'm going to bring the plane into land. That is a really cool configuration, man. I like that a lot. So if you're on your own and you don't want to get into a flight computer, you can do this with just a Vario receiver and a gyro. It's a fairly simple radio setup and the plane saves itself. I really like this setup a lot. Very good for trainers. And Freddie doesn't know this yet, but he's going home with this plane. <laughs> he just figured, he just learned that he's going home with this plane. I'm not taking that plane home. That's for Freddie. I built that just for Fred because he's getting ready to finish up his trainer work on the FMS Ranger. And he's going to need to be able to fly something maybe a little faster, a little more competent, something that will push his orientation skills a little bit. And I think the Bix 2 with that auto rescue mode will be just the ticket. So congratulations, Fred. You got yourself a new plane. Thanks a lot, John. Sure do appreciate it. I hope you guys liked my video. And if you did, subscribe and hit the bell. YouTube should recommend another video for you just about now. That's all I've got for today. Get out there and fly something. Later, folks.